Are you still confused with some rules in subject-verb agreement? Let's talk about them today. One of the hardest parts in learning English grammar is that we are sometimes confused which verb to use. Should we use singular verb or should we use plural verb? Which one is singular or which one is plural? I've decided to make this video today because I know that there are still some of you who are confused with specific rules in subject verb agreement. The general rule is that when we have singular subject, when we say singular subject, we mean to say we only have one subject, we have one person, one animal, one thing. And if we have one subject, that means our verb should also be singular. A verb is singular in meaning, but sometimes it is plural in form. That's why a lot of learners are confused, because when it comes to nouns or when it comes to our subjects, when we see the letter S, we all know already that we have plural subject, right? It's more than one since there is an S. But when it comes to verb, we have an S if it's singular. For example, the verb talk is plural in form because it doesn't have an S. When it has an S, talks, then it's singular. Its function in the sentence is for the singular subject. Let's have this sentence, for example. She talks loudly every day in class. Again, she talks loudly every day in class. She is one, we have one subject there, and notice that we have an S after our verb, talks, so it's not talk. Because, as I've said, when our verb is singular, we use an S after it. Now let's talk about some of the most confusing things when it comes to subject-verb agreement or SVA. First is the use of one of, for example, one of the students, one of the dogs, or one of the houses. Notice that we have S at the end of our nouns there in those phrases, um, students, houses, dogs, right? They are plural, but remember that we have words before those nouns? We have one of the. So if it's one of the students, we mean to say, or we are only pertaining to one, one of the students. That means the verb that we have to use is singular verb. Let's have this sentence, for example, one of the students in that class is my sister. Again, one of the students in that class is my sister. What's our verb in the sentence? It's is, which is singular. Another example is one of the things I like about her. Now I want to choose the verb. One of the things I like about her is or her sense of humor. Again, do not be confused with our noun in this phrase. Even though we have S after thing, one of the things I like about her, our verb should be is and not are. Again, our focus there is the word one and not things. Our sentence is, one of the things I like about her is her sense of humor. The second one is the use of together with, besides, as well as, and with. If we have these in our sentences, please do not be confused. Focus on the first subject or focus on the first noun. Let's have this sentence, for example. My best friend together with her children is coming to our house. Again, my best friend together with her children is coming to our house. So why did I use is there when there is the phrase together with her children? Should we combine them and take them as plural subject? By the way, when we say plural subject, we mean to say that there are two um, sets of people or two people, two groups of people in the sentence. So in this sentence, our main subject is actually just my best friend. Even though we have the phrase together with their children, our verb should still be singular because I am just talking about my best friend. I've just added the information that she's coming with her children. Let's have the next sentence, but this time I want you to guess the verb we have to use. Her dog as well as her cat 
is R playing in the yard. Again, her dog as well as her cat is R playing in the yard. Which verb should we use here? Again, we're not taking these phrase as a compound subject, all right? We only have one subject here. Our main focus here is her dog and not her dog and her cat, all right? It makes a difference. That means our verb in the sentence is is and not are. All right, that's another point to make here because um, it makes a difference when we are using and and when we are using together with as well as with besides. Let's say we have and in this sentence. Her dog and her cat is or playing in the yard. Now, which verb should we use? It's obviously are and not is. Why is that? Because this time, we are taking or we are looking at compound subject. Again, if it's and, then combine them and take them as plural subject. If we don't have and there, and instead we have together with, as well as with, besides, then focus on the first noun and choose which verb to use depending on that. The third one is the use of each in sentences and everyone. Sometimes we get confused because, again, there are some words in the same phrase as each. For example, each of the students. If we have that phrase in the sentence, please do not be confused. Do not use a plural form of a verb. Instead, use the singular one because our focus there is the word each. Let's have this sentence, for example. Each of the students is required to construct their own poem. Again, each of the students is required to construct their own poem. I am talking about each of the student here, the individual student. That's why I have to use the singular verb. Let's have another example. Each of the houses in the village is painted with murals. Again, each of the houses in the village is painted with murals. Now notice that even though I used houses for its subject here, we still use a singular verb. Again, that's mainly because our focus here is the word each and not the word houses. Number four is the usage of neither nor and either or. Now this is, I think, one of the most confusing parts in learning English grammar because we have two subjects when we use neither nor and either or. By the way, we call these two correlative conjunctions. They function as conjunctions and we call them correlative because there are two or there are a pair of them. Another example of correlative conjunction is not only but also. So I've mentioned that there are two subjects when we use neither nor and either or, but which one should the or verb in the sentence follow? It's the subject which is nearest to the verb. If one subject is singular and the other one is plural, when you're deciding which verb to choose, singular or plural, take a look at the verb which is nearest or closest to the verb. For example, neither her secretary nor her business partners are informed of what is happening. Again, neither her secretary nor her business partners are informed of what is happening. Our first subject is her secretary, which is singular. The second one is her business partners, which is plural. Now, which verb did I use, singular or plural? I used the plural verb. Why? Because the subject which is nearest to the verb is her business partners and not her secretary. Now that is plural, so our verb in the sentence should agree with it. Let's have another example for either or. Either her parents or her boyfriend is are coming with her. Let me see if you remember what I've just said. Which verb should we use in this sentence? Our first object here is plural, her parents. The second one is singular, her boyfriend. 
So which one should we use? It's is and not are. Our sentence is, either her parents or her boyfriend is coming with her. Sometimes English learners are confused if both subjects are singular and they tend to combine them and take them as compound subject. Again, we're only taking those two nouns as compound subjects if they are joined by and. If they are joined by other words such as or, in this case, we have or because we have either, then we have to use a singular verb. Let's have this sentence, for example. It's either Kate or Tasha who owns the car. Again, it's either Kate or Tasha who owns the car. Which one is the verb in the sentence? It's the word owns. This verb is singular because we have S at the end of it. And again, we used singular verb here because we're not taking Tasha and Kate as compound subject. We're looking at them separately. Number five and the last one is the use of non in sentences. Now, in the past, if we have non in sentences, automatically our verb should be singular. For example, none of the students is present in the virtual class. Again, none of the students is present in the virtual class. We have their non and we have the word students, which is plural but we're not going to use the plural verb because we have the word none that means no one right if that is the case we have to use singular verb these days we have actually a new rule it depends on which one is the focus in sentences if the noun in the sentence is a non-count or uncountable noun automatically the verb should be singular for example if it's cake um money Let's have sentences for them. None of the cake is left. Again, none of the cake is left. Cake is uncountable noun here. So we have to use singular verb. None of the cake is left. Another example, none of her money was saved from the fire. Again, none of her money was saved from the fire. Notice that I used there was, which is singular and not because money is uncountable noun or non-count noun. I was saying something earlier, I've said that when it comes to noun and when it comes to countable nouns, it depends on the focus of the sentence. Earlier I had an example, none of the students, then I used a singular verb, but this time, take a look at this sentence. None of the students have brought their art materials. Again, none of the students have brought their art materials. Now, have there indicates that we have plural verb, right? Because have is plural, has is singular. Now, why did I use plural verb here and not singular? Sometimes it really depends on the sentence. I have here an indicator, actually. I have there, there. None of the students have brought their art materials. Now that they're there indicates that I have to use plural verb. The emphasis in this statement is that we are looking at the students as many, as plural. That's why we have to use the plural verb. Earlier, our focus there is our students is one body, so we have to use a singular verb. And that's the end of the lesson. Before you close this video, before you click on another video, please make sure to visit the Google Forms that I have there. I'll attach a link to Google Forms there in the description. Take the quiz and check if you really learned from this video. Well, I hope you really learned something. If you have suggestions for the topics that I will discuss in the future, let's say you want to learn a specific lesson in English and they haven't posted anything about that yet, Leave that in the comments. I'll try my best. Let's see if I can make a lesson out of that. Thank you for always supporting my channel. Thank you for waiting. Share this with other learners. I really appreciate that. We currently have 1,561 subscribers. Thank you very much to all of you. Stay safe. Stay dehydrated. It's still hot these days. Dream and make your dream happen. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.